Morning guys, welcome back to the channel. Right, Monday morning, I'm pretty happy today actually. So we've got the cylinder head on the Cosworth here. You see all the bits over here on our nice new bench. I think this is the reason we're happy actually, because we've got nice clean benches to work off. Everything's nice and clean. And I've got to get this Cosworth pretty much done today. So yeah, it's lovely to work in, in clean and not have any dirty, horrible bits. Um, but what I'm going to show you first of all today is I'm just putting the exhaust studs in, as you can see. I've got to paint the exhaust manifold, but you see here I've got a row of hydraulic lifters in there. Now these are the original hydraulic lifters. They're the twin chamber ones. A lot of people on the Cosworth will sell or use the Volkswagen PD lifters. They're pretty much the same size, but they are a single chamber. So you see them for sale for sort of 80 quid a set. Um, seems quite cheap and in the past I have used them when these twin chambers weren't available but now they are I can get them these are the ones I use what tends to happen with the single chamber is if they're sort of tuned or using it for track use or even for road use to be honest we've had it where they don't last that long um, also they can sort of tap for quite a long time from us from standard and we've even had it where we bought a set and one just won't shut up and we've had to replace them but we don't have that trouble with these originals um, here. Well, they're an original copy, basically. They've got the coating on the top, so they're absolutely bulletproof. Say so they've got the twin chamber barrel inside. Um, but what I tend to do first is when they come from new in the factory, they come with like a fluid in them which jacks them out. Um, it's like a preservative fluid, really. But what I tend to do is I squeeze that out. Um, two reasons one is to get rid of that fluid and two is to make sure that they're nice and squidgy so when we fire it up we're not going to have any valves that are jacked open and the pistons hit the valves so I always do that with hydraulics um, we have got a jig to blow them apart but to be honest if you if you're careful I just tend to squeeze them out so I'll go over and um, show you how we do that so what we've got here guys is just a normal vice these are our hydraulic lifter. So you've got the coating on the top. And how they work is from the cylinder head, it sort of injects oil under pressure into here, which you've got a plunger in the bottom with a double sort of ball valve chamber in there. It's just a spring and a ball. And um, that jacks out. It's a one-way sort of valve. And that sort of jacks out, takes up the clearance, makes the the camshaft work as it's going to and as it's meant to and doesn't give you any tapping noise so what we're going to do is squeeze the fluid out of that now because it's a one-way valve you need to be very careful how you squeeze it out um, very very slowly and the fluid will come out you don't want to go too overboard but what we do is I've got some a piece of bronze here which I use push on the plunger uh, we then use the aluminium soft jaws and some cloth so we don't damage the face and what we do is we just wind wind it in very slowly with the hole facing downwards and you see the fluid come out then what you do is you release it and it will jack itself out fill with fluid again then you push and squeeze out and you basically do it until it squeeze it's sort of squidgy and just the spring doing its job and um, and no more fluid comes out. So I'll show you how I'll do it. But you have got to be careful with this. So you see that? We just squeeze in very gently. You can see the fluid drip out. Then backwards, then forwards again until it stops. And back out. See that nice flow of fluid there? surprising how much fluid they hold and what happens is you find there's no resistance now going in and out so that's just working off the spring so you remove that and you see now that's just nice and squidgy that's perfect for going in so we'll give that a good clean oil it up with the oil we're going to use on the in the head and we'll pop that in now I know 
quite a lot of you are going to say, I cannot believe he's put something that's going to go in that engine into that visor and use it like that. But we've done it loads and loads of times before. We've got the aluminium jaw in there. We've got some cloth. It doesn't damage it whatsoever. I've done this eight here and you can see on the top, it be perfect. So as I say, as long as you go nice and steady, you'll be absolutely fine. Now these are in here with some oil. And if we press these down, look, you just make sure that they're all nice and squidgy. And what will happen is as soon as you get the oil pressure up, you fire the engine up, within a split second, these will jack out of oil and that'll be absolutely fine. As I say, these genuine ones don't really give any trouble whatsoever. So we're just going to get the other eight done, get them in, and then we can get the camshafts in. Right, guys, so we've just had this engine turn up. This is the second one we've seen certainly since I've been here. Um, this is a Lagonda Rapier engine. Um, so as you can see, I think this is a 1936 or something like that. So it's real old, you know, getting on 90 years old. Um, so when you actually have a look at it, it's a real advanced bit of kit for its time. You've got twin overhead cam there. You've got chain driven. So <laughs> when you actually look at this, not a lot's changed these days. You know, they still use a chain driven. So in here, you've got a sprocket under here. Um, the cams are driven by this center sprocket, which is gone, which is sort of driven down from the crank. Um, so yeah, similar sort of setup really to, to modern engines. And as I say, twin, twin overhead cam, um, real advanced bit of kit that is for its day. Now we had one of these in here oh, I don't know, three, four years ago or something. Um, the guy sent it in, it was in a, a Lagonda, you know, an original car, but he was gonna be using it for sort of hill climbs and stuff like that. Um, he bought the car and it was a bit of an unknown what, what was up with the engine um, and what had been done to it. But when we actually got in amongst it, not only are these old and very rare, um, although you can get bits from the sort of owner's club and what have you, but the one that he sent in was so modified, hardly anything was original. It had aftermarket rods, aftermarket crankshaft, cams were different. The whole chain setup was completely different. It even had a different style chain. Um, so we had to get the chain made from America, which was about 600 pounds. Um, everything was just bespoke on it. Um, and he has done sort of three or four hill climbs in that car um, so it was one of those engines where we said look yeah we'll do it but it's a complete unknown and um, we, we don't even know whether it works you know it's he's got no history on the car um, it's a real sort of R&D job it was so we did it he's done sort of three or four hill climbs or, or sprints or whatever it is with it and um, quite successful but he has had trouble with it and it is over at Graham Hill Autos at the moment in sort of half pieces because he's in here somewhere. Now, <laughs> I can't remember the actual setup of, of his, but in here somewhere there is a fibre sort of helical cut gear, really. You've got a, you've got a sprocket wheel with a fibre outer cog on it. And the idea is, I think, of that is for noise really to cut down the noise but because he's so heavy heavily modified he's got big old larry cams in it and what have you it's just sheared the sheared the teeth off the off the fiber gear wheel so fortunately i don't think we've had any sort of valve to piston clearance um issues graham has, has sent the the pulley wheel over here with a new fiber gear which he's managed to get from the owners club and we've fitted it um, you have to fit it on with sort of rivets and uh, we put that on sent it back and ground's just putting it together so fingers crossed that that'll all be all right but this engine here we believe is pretty much standard um, the gentleman that's doing this is in his 80s so fair play to him um, he sent it here on the pallet all nicely presented with all these little bits in the boxes there um, so i think he's had the head off this recently but he's just put it all back in for transit so we're going to get this thing apart and um yeah quite excited to see what we've got in there and what the what the issues are but yeah not very often you're going to see one of these guys so there we go cams are in belts on do you know what it doesn't matter how many i do of these cosworths i always get excited when i see them sort of almost finished 
They just look pretty to me. I think it's just, I think Cosworth's just in my blood, really. Almost done on this one. Come to a standstill almost with it because we're waiting for, I'm still waiting for an oil pump. Um, you've got to be careful on the oil pumps on these Cosworths. Always get a good, you know, a good quality one. Oil pump drive, um, exhaust manifold nuts and washers I'm still waiting for. And that is about it really. So just got to put the bolts in on the pulleys, tighten it all up and then tighten the, the can belt up. And that's about it really. I can clean the sump pop I suppose, but yeah, almost there on this one guys. So next little job is I've got to go through this Alfa Romeo cylinder head. Now, I don't know whether you remember, ooh, I don't know, three or four videos back, I showed you how I opened up the seats for bigger valves on an Alfa head. Well, this is the head that I did. Um, it's all fully ported and what have you. This is for Bob Dove Motorsport. And what I had to do was use the existing seats that were in there, but take them right out with the, the three-phase cutter um, because Bob was putting bigger valves in there. Um, so I did all that work and he's done all the porting and what have you. But unfortunately, this head, I don't think he knew about it, but this head has been well and truly bent in the past. Um, very rarely does it make any difference to the camshafts, but on this particular head, apparently they've put the camshafts in and it's pretty bent. Um, so this head, they are not going to use. They're going to replace it with this cylinder head. So we've got to take quite a bit off the surface of the head and we've got to replicate the seats for this one. As you can see, they've done the porting already. We've just got to replicate the seats for the bigger valves. So unfortunately, all that work seems to have been a bit wasted and um, we've got to replicate it on this head. So yeah, such a shame for them guys. But um, I'm going to do that next, I think. And then I'm going to set the V8 up and that is this V8 over here. This is for Devon 4x4. They're gonna do the building of this engine. It was in a hell of a state when it come in. I don't know whether you can remember that, but all we've done is we've thoroughly cleaned it with our pressure washer and scrubbed it. it took actually quite a few hours to do that. It was in a right old pickle. Um, we've gonna, we're gonna soda blast the cylinder heads and we're gonna do the valve seats and reface those. We've cleaned those up. They were in a right mess. Same with the front cover there, but the block is going to go out to plus 20. We're not going to face the blocks. I think they want to leave those, but we're just going to bore those. But rather than bore them, I think I'm going to do them on the home over there on the Delapina, and I'm going to run the core stones down there and rough them out first. So just in the middle of the alpha head, guys, as you can see, I've done the inlets. I took about two mil out of the inlets, as you can see. Bob's just going to take it away and blend those now. And as you can see by the exhaust, I've just bored the throat of the first exhaust. Um, standard, you can see that they're a 30 degree seat. I have actually took about three mil out of the bore of that exhaust. And I've got now got to cut a 45 degree seat because the, the new valve has got a 45 degree seat on. So yeah. just going to crack on with that. And then we're going to measure the depth of this head compared to the old yeah. one. And we've got to take the same amount off this one. And then hopefully, fingers crossed, that's them guys sorted. Bit better look this time. So guys, update on the van. I've just had the paperwork through. I've got to ring John Bunnell and see what they want doing about payment and then we can get that sorted. They've still got the van. Um, he's just prepping it and I'm not too sure about the, the tow bar yet, whether that's fitted, but I'm absolutely buzzing to get this van now. I wanna do another review on it. I quite enjoyed doing that review yesterday, actually, on my car. Um, so yeah, I'll keep you updated on that one, guys. But until then, thanks ever so much for watching. Um, like, subscribe, and we'll see you again on Wednesday. You take care.